Okay, so this is going to be the second video in our series on learning programming with the Arduino, learning programming in C. And hopefully you watched the first video already where we talked about how to use uh, variables. Um, and this was the code that we were left with uh, we were left with last time, and this is the setup. I should just mention if you click on the link in the description of the video, then you'll you'll find a copy of this setup available in Tinkercad. Now there's no reason why you can't be doing this on a real Arduino if you happen to have one available. Um, and so you just want to hook up the circuit and just to review we have an LED hooked up to uh, pin 13. LED here on pin 13 we have a, a potentiometer hooked up to our uh, A0, analog in A0. So um, and essentially we learned how to create a variable. We created the variable here and it was an integer and it allowed us to um, do things like uh, start delaying you know a flashing rate of 500 milliseconds or half a second um, and we could define it in the variable here and use it down here but then we were able to change it so over Gradually, it got longer over time because this loop continued to run and it would grab the current value, initially 500, and add 10 to it and then reassign that back into the variable. So, you know, variables are very useful for not just storing information and modifying information, but also uh, being able to base, uh, being able to execute certain parts of code depending on you know what that variable is and those are called conditional statements or if statements that's what we're going to look at in this video so what how do we use a value that could be changing over time how do we use that to sometimes do one thing and sometimes do another i think the best example for this would be to take the flashing away from the led take the code out and then use this potentiometer to turn it off and on. Now, you may not be familiar with what a potentiometer is and what it does, so just you know, very quickly, I'll explain that this is a type of resistor that we can change its resistance by uh, dialing, changing the position of this dial. So it says 250 kilo ohms, that's the resistance between this terminal and this terminal. But this is the terminal we're going, to, we're going to use as a measure of variable resistance. And as we turn this, this, the amount of resistance between, say, this point and this point is going to change. And as that changes, it's going to change. This, this is connected to plus 5 volts, you'll notice. So as the amount of resistance changes, we're going to see a, resist, a proportional change in the voltage that appears on this pin. So when this is dialed right over to the plus 5 volt side, we basically have 5 volts, no resistance, almost 5 volts coming out of this uh, out of this wire and into analog in. And then as we move it down here, we get closer to ground, which is basically going to mean that the connection here is almost connected to ground, so essentially connected to ground, so that's essentially zero volts. So we can have from five volts to zero volts coming out of this wire into analog in. Well, what does that mean? Um, you know, I'm going to get rid of this variable for now, and well, I'll just change this variable actually. Let's, let's see what we can do with this input. So. I'll call this, this is called a potentiometer. So I'll just, you know, check what the value of the potentiometer is or the voltage. So um, you might call it all sorts of things. Maybe I'll just call it P for now. Uh, not the most descriptive variable name, pot value, I don't know. I'll just call it uh, uh, P. And it's the integer, it's going to be an integer, we're going to read an integer from this analog pin. Now if you're not familiar with the Arduino, then you might not, uh, then you don't know what I'm going to do with this A0 pin. Let's, let's go to the reference manual and look at 
uh, how we read an analog pen. So here's some digital stuff, but here's some analog stuff. You can see there's an analog read, and we definitely are wanting to use it as an input. So read would probably make the probably make sense. Let's look at the description here. It says right off the top here, reads the value from the specified pin and uh, it uses this 10-bit analog to digital converter, it, but it maps that value, whatever that voltage is, it will map that value to a value between 0 and 1023. So there's your range. So 0 volts will be 0, 5 volts on this board will be 1023, and any volt, uh, any position in between will give us uh, some different values. Okay, so here's their code. You can just grab this code. Let's do that. Let's just grab that code directly. It's where we were essentially going. And let's just look at what's similar here. I'll just point out, first of all, in setup, that they've opened that serial monitor. So we're going to be able to print the values that are red, we're going to be able to print those on the serial monitor like we did before. They've created a uh, they've created a variable called analog pin. This is might look a little strange because they're assigning the value, it's an integer, and they're assigning the value A3. Um, but A3 is actually a set value in the Arduino. So just like just all these pins here have the labels A0, A1, etc. up to A5. Just like output and input were uh, and high and low were kind of preset values, A3 is all, also a preset value. And it is set to a, num a number. And I don't remember what the number is for this pin, but it's something like uh, 19 or something like that, or 14. These, you can see these pins are all numbered, 0 up to 13. These numbers do continue up here. I'm not sure what the actual... Th that's why they've done this, because you probably won't remember what the pins are uh, in terms of their actual numbers inside of like the code, but you will remember that you connected it to pin you know, A3, or in our case, A0. That's a no, that's... sorry, that's not a no, that's a 0. So since we connected to A0. And then they're going to read a value in down here using whatever that analog pin was set to A0. So you need to change yours to A0 because we're using A0 here. They're going to use analog read. It's going to get that voltage and it's going to turn it into an integer. So this value is going to be the integer between 0 and 1023. And then it's going to print it out. Let's read that or let's run that, excuse me, and so no errors, simulator is running, and we should open the, the monitor. Now let's just go back to what we were talking about earlier. This is, the wiper is connected or is turned all the way down to where the ground is, and you'll see a value of zero. That is what we expected. If we go all the way up to the top, which is on the plus five volts, we're getting 1023, also what we expected. And if we get it somewhere close to the middle-ish, hello there, we see values around 512 or 511, halfway between 0 and 1023. So this is doing exactly what we might have thought. There's kind of halfway to halfway, so like roughly a quarter of a thousand. Oh, or three quarters, excuse me. It, that's zero, so this is a quarter, a half, two quarters, three quarters. So these numbers look... You know, that this is sensible, this is making sense, I think. We'll stop that. And we'll go back to the original idea. Let's turn this LED on if it's greater than the halfway point, which is a value which we saw originally was, I think, 511. So how do we do that? Well, uh, let's just write the if statement here first. So, so do it right here. So we're using what's called an if statement and this is a way to evaluate a condition and then run certain code if that condition is true. So I'm going to write it the same way I did with the functions at the beginning uh, in the other video. So uh, these are parentheses, these are curly braces and you really want to be careful about not losing one of those braces. This is going to be the condition so we have to place 
a statement in here that can be evaluated to true or false. Talk about that in a moment. And then in here, the code that we're going to run if this thing is actually true. So the let's just put it in a condition we know is going to be true. Does one equal to one? I know that kind of seems a little weird, but uh, and then I'm going to put something in here. Serial dot print line true. Okay, so semicolon. So when we run this, if this condition is true, it is, and this might look weird because you, why would you ever ask such a strange question? But I really, I think, that, you know, you can ask yourself, does one equal to one? And, I'm, you know, obviously it does. So this, this should be true. We should see this thing printing true. Let's just check that that makes sense saying true. It's also printing, don't forget, this number here. So it's kind of, as it runs the loop, it first prints the value, then it prints this message. And we'll just ask ourselves, hey, does 1 equal 0? That's obviously not true. And it doesn't print anything. Didn't print false either. I mean, I didn't put a statement here to print false. It just didn't do this. So that's what the if statement is going to do for us. So we're going to put a more sensible condition in here. And you might be asking, why do you use two equal signs? That's weird. And, uh, you know, it isn't, it is actually, it's, it's not weird at all when, when you think about the fact that one equal sign already means something. So if we think of this as having the meaning, take this value and store it in the name on the, take the value on the right, the zero, and store it in the, in the variable name on the left, in this case, val, that's the meaning of one equal sign. It's assignment. You can't have the computer know that in this case, one equal sign is supposed to mean check if these two things are equal. In other words, you have to have a different kind of way of saying that. So two equal signs is checking for equality. Two equal signs means, hey, is, are the two things on either side of this double equal sign, are they the same? Are they equal? And if, if they are, then this thing, you can almost think that this thing almost gets replaced by a true, a value of true, if you want to think of it that way, if you've dealt with Booleans. But uh, we will deal with those later. So let's change that. Let's say, hey, does value equal zero? Let's do that. Two equal signs. And this is, you know, this is a common mistake. Let's just see what happens. Is this going to be an error? Like, is Arduino going to tell us we made a mistake here? And, you know, obviously it's not. There's no, it's not, you know, a, a mistake. If we haven't done it yet, a mistake looks like, I don't know, maybe you just throw in more equal signs. There's a mistake. Sorry, it seems like your code has some errors. Some kind of error uh, around lines 13 or 14 or 15. So it's kind of not entirely sure, but it knows something is wrong in here. It has highlighted this line, so... Maybe it is certain that the error is there. So, and sometimes you'll run code, and that highlight line won't go away. It did there, so that's fine. Okay, so we're testing if two things are equal, and uh, I was just pointing out that this is a nasty, nasty bug because it doesn't come up telling you that there's a bug there and there's something wrong. We'll come back to that in a moment. But let's just see if this is equal to zero. And what was it that we did to turn that value being read on a zero to zero? Well, we had to turn this crank this all the way down to the bottom where it was equal. Uh, oops, I should have put this up here. So it was up here earlier. So it's just printing out numbers. No value of true here until I crank it all the way down. All the way down is ground. Now we're getting a value of zero, and now it's printing those true statements. So this code only executes under the condition of the variable equaling zero. Okay, well, what if it were less than 511? What would that mean? Well, this, oops, this position here was zero. This position was about 511, and everything above that position in, in, in terms of turning it further past that point is a higher value. Uh, a higher value that um, plus 5 volts generates values up to 1023. So I think what we're going to see is we should be able to turn, you know, turn on our true print true statement. So long as this 
uh, potentiometer is pointing somewhere to the you know the right of the vertical position so between say 12 and f 5 whatever time this would be if this were a clock and if we go above the the uh, the 12 you know we're over here by 9 o'clock say well it's not printing out true the value is too great you can see as it just kind of ticked past the top that true started coming out again now there's one other thing that you typically will see with an if statement not always but a very common other part of an if statement is called the else part of the statement and this I'm going to put false here so if this statement is true it's going to run this part just like we discussed but if this is not true it's going to run the alternative kind of code in the else clause so if I run this, we're always going to see it's, it either has to be true or not true. So it's always going to do one of these. And currently it's, it's running true. It's just edged up over the vertical position. But if I push it down beyond, you can see it turned to false. And nowhere in this, still saying false, nowhere can I put it where it doesn't print either true or false. So it either has to print one or the other. So this is a huge step forward in programming. Suddenly there's all sorts of things that can happen based on the fact that we can check the condition, check some value, check the condition of a variable, and find out something about the outside world or some other you know, calculation that we've done, and then act accordingly. So let's turn on this LED. We were doing this before. We originally had a... Um, a line in our setup that did a pin mode. You'll notice we didn't have to pin mode this analog input pin. By default, these are inputs and are set up as such and don't need to be told that they're inputs. These digital, these pins, you'll notice, are digital, are input output pins. And so we must say what the pin is. We are on pin 13. So we must say what the pin is before we try to use it. So it's an output pin. And we could, and you'll remember when we flashed it, we we're doing digital write. This has to be in caps. So that was a turn on the LED. And this was the turn off the LED. So if you think about what's going to happen before you run it, you know, it's really important to do that. It's a really good way to, you know, uh, really improve your understanding of code is to look at the code and think about it very carefully and force yourself to the point where you know what the output is going to be or, you you know, you've got the best idea possible. You, you're pretty certain you know what's going to happen. And then we're going to uh, test that and run the code and test it and see what's going to happen. So... What I think is, if this value is greater than 511, like it was before, so to the right of this line, then that LED is going to be on. And if it's below that line on this side, then it's going to digital write 13 low. That should turn off the LED. Let me run it and give it a moment to kind of warm up, I guess. That LED is on. Move it. Just wait for a moment. Definitely still on. Definitely still on, maybe I'm wrong. Let's see what happens. I crossed that line. Now slowly <laughs> it's fading on this super slow motion uh, simulation running on my laptop here. And so it definitely did turn off. You know, it's definitely, it's off, off now and off as we go down further. So we've got a if statement that is able to run from the, from the, uh, the potentiometer and it's able to determine whether this is on or off and we'll we'll maybe stop there i'm being interrupted here but i'll stop there and uh we'll continue on in the next video